Hello everyone, welcome to another Evolve Lab YouTube video. Uh, my name is Chris and today I will be going over part one of a two-part mini-series on how to use dictionaries uh, in Dynamo in order to simplify your scripts and streamline how you move information and logic across your scripts. Uh, in this part one demo, we'll be showing an already constructed script on how to construct like a simple tower. Part two will be how to modify that script and how easy it is to use dictionaries to keep track of logic and shift your logic chunks around throughout a script. Uh, the uh, scripts for both of these videos will be downloadable, so watch for that if you want to follow along with us. And uh, be sure to check out part two when it comes out. Um, so without further ado, let's just get into this demo here. We'll be using the dictionary over here. Um, if you look in the top left of your menu, then you see the dictionaries. And with these dictionaries, we can store data in sort of a more centralized way or a more consistent way across our scripts, as opposed to having to manage multiple list objects throughout a script. And then like, if you've done any very large Dynamo scripts before, you know how you'll need multiple lists. You'll need to keep track of orders so that the order remains consistent throughout the whole list. It can get pretty messy. Dictionaries will allow us to organize our script in a way that we keep all of that data together and we can just manage parts of it that we need one at a time. It'll allow for a little more like one point of entry per logic group and one point of exit using the Dynamo or using the dictionary object. So if you haven't worked with dictionaries before, um, one of the benefits of Revit 2020 and also Dynamo 2.3 is that it allows you to work with dictionaries a little more easily. So here, um, it actually supports dictionaries in a more robust way. I think I think it was before you couldn't do create them from uh, strings or work with them in Python nodes and um, just there there are various hangups. I think you had to use this dictionary block here, uh, which is fine because that's kind of mostly what we'll be, we'll be using. But um, it, actually, if you add Python nodes to this and and that sort of thing, you can make it even more of a, of a pretty good productivity and data management tool in Dynamo. But anyway, back to the back to what a dictionary is. So a dictionary, um, and it's it's built using the node by this dictionary by keys and values, is an object that stores data using keys um, as a way to point to a particular piece of data. So you can see in this code block here, I have a list of keys. So some string, some number, some list, some point. And then I have a list of values um, associated with those keys. So the first, um, or the first key in the keys list corresponds with the first value in the values list. So some string, uh, you can see here, some string, hello world, some number, 100. Some list is a list, and then some point is actually a dynamo point. So you can see from this, um, I'm using this point by coordinates, which is also the same as point dot by coordinates. Um, so a value in a dictionary could be any sort of data type you want. Um, it could be a list, it could be a string, it could be a point. Anything that is an object in Dynamo can be added to a dictionary. Uh, and then if you wanna do this from scratch, you can have a dictionary as, as shown below. So you'll use the curly brackets and then this colon here is what denotes some value with some string, some value or some key with some value, key, value, key, value. If you want to do lists from scratch, you can use these, the straight brackets. Um, and then I'll have like 100 comma hello world comma 101. You can see how that manifests as a list down here. And then I'll have point by coordinates. And this becomes much more useful once you start building larger, more complex objects. I think if you're having a small script where you don't really have many lists to um, manage, you don't actually have that many logic points, 
that you need to manage throughout the script, then it's fine. You don't really need to do this. But what we're going to do today then is start on this tower. And this tower will have a little more complexity to it where I'm not going to want to manage my uh, values in multiple chains of logic and then kind of combine them all at the end. I'd rather keep them all in one place and work on those bits one at a time. All right, so for this tower here, what we have is a script I set up already that has a section of inputs and then groups of logic. And then at the end, this is what displays the tower based on color. So you can already see that even for this tower, which is relatively complex, even though I don't have all of these sliders input, I can still change this to say like nine stories instead of 15. You can change the number of podium floors to three. Um, it's, it already, it's still pretty simplified, right? It's, it's just one string of logic. There's no list for, there's no multiple lists to keep track of or manipulate over time and then like brought back together to become geometry. It's actually just one string. Um, and in this demo, what we'll end up doing is posting or introducing the floor height length width, tower height length width, all of these things into the script so that these actually work. Um, and we'll be doing that by manipulating this story object here. So let's go over this uh, other part of the script now. So essentially how this works is that we have the story object. It's a dictionary or of um, elevation, which it has a set a default value of zero, a length set to a default value of 50, a width set to a default value of 75, height value, geometry, which is set to blank right now because there isn't a geometry when this is initialized, program, everything's a tower at first, zero rotation, and we're going to provide it with a color. This is black. Um, obviously, you can tell that those things aren't all um, you know, black right now. And what I've also done is a, I've made a list of repeated items so that the repeated items is the number of floors. So you can see that this is a list of nine. If I change this to say a 14 floor tower, now we're at a list of 14. And essentially what this is, is it's the same dictionary object repeated 14 times. But what this gives us now is a list um, of, well, it essentially is the equivalent of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lists all at once um, that we can we don't have to keep track of because they'll reorder themselves each time. Each each story, each floor of the tower is its own encapsulated data unit. Um, so what you can see here is what we'll do is we'll set the elevations in this uh, chunk of code, and what the elevation is is the bottom height of the floor, uh, essentially the Revit level, and how I've done that is. Um, for each story height, it adds, um, or each floor height, it adds an, adds to the uh, elevation below it. So the, the second level starts at 12, the third level starts at 14, uh, or the third level starts at 24, 36, so on and so forth. Um, but the great thing about the dictionaries is, is that I can just pull out the height of that, of that object and then sum those all together, so 0, 12, 24, 36, and then plug those in to the elevation portion of this dictionary object. And you can see that this elevation is zero, which makes sense, it's the first floor. This elevation is 12, 24, 36, and so on and so forth. And because I'm using dictionary objects, this is its own encapsulated group. So there's one entry point and one exit point for this logic. The other thing you might wanna keep track of and because it's a list, it'll sort by, it'll just keep its um, order throughout the whole thing. But suppose you want to sort by something. In this case, I want to sort by elevation. I don't technically have to do this because it already is sorted by elevation, but suppose I wanted to sort by, I don't know, program or height or width or something. I can then go and, and sort by something like that and it'll output the same dictionary objects in a sorted list. Um, this becomes, useful if you want to just like pick the first floor or pick the last floor based on some sorted list. Um, the next thing we're going to do in this logic is set um, the number of podiums versus towers. So as you can see in this input here, I have a designated number of podiums, podium floors. So if I change that to five, it'll, it'll be five. 
So I'm bringing in that podium story count here and it, as well as the story. So this is like all of the data that I will need at the beginning of this logic block. And that way I know from the start that if I were to delete this or reconnect this somehow or insert something new in between these, I would know exactly what needs to go into here. I wouldn't have to um, go back and look through what lists um, went into this initially. And just it keeps everything nice and clean at this logic group. Um, and then in the same way that we worked with last time, I'm grabbing or I'm setting the program based on some logic. In this case, it's just grabbing the first five floors based on um, its order in the list and then assigning podium for the first fly, five and tower for the last uh, however many. And then we're plugging that back into the program section of my dictionary. So now if we look at here, we see podium, 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 but if we keep going, we'll end up at tower all the way to the end, which is tower. And then what we can then do here with our single output, which is just our list of stories, is we can take a podium, a podium color and a tower color and our stories here and start to create our geometry. So say at this point we want to create some shape at the level um, of the floor. So we'll take the elevation of the floor, create a plane at that elevation, and then at each of those elevations we're going to create a rectangle and we're going to create an ellipse which we can then extrude based on the height of the floor. And then, based on that, we can um, build, we can select that geometry, right? So if, if we can ask if it is a podium, and if it is a podium, we'll say true, right? If list object equals podium, then we'll say true versus false. And then based on if it's a podium shape or a tower shape, we can then assign a rectangle or an ellipse. And same with the colors. If it's podium or a rectangle, we can assign colors using this if block. And what we end up with is each of these now have a geometry associated with it as well as a color based on what it exists as. And then here we can output the tower. So it's a pretty clean script, uh, even though it does a decent amount. Um, there's actually not a whole lot of, of spaghetti. There's, there's not a whole lot of going back and forth within the script. It keeps everything nice, clean, linear in terms of logic. So thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you learned a decent amount about dictionaries, what they are, how they can be used to make sure our scripts are a little more streamlined and organized nicely in terms of list management, data management, and how things are coming together. Uh, just a reminder that this is only part one of a two-part series, so uh, be sure to tune in for part two where we actually modify the script, add new logic, change the order of some of the existing logic so things work better. Um, so it might be handy if you haven't downloaded this already to download it, really understand what's going on, um, so that two part in part two you can uh, understand this a little better, follow with us a little better. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you next time.